cool. we're grateful that you're all here. Uh, it was a small group tonight and uh, Pat Ferris is looking in because he had some oral surgery done today because so he can't speak, so he might type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll we'll fill. Well, that's the way to stop it. Make him have oral surgery, huh? <laughs> that's right. And I said for a preacher not to be able to speak, that's kind of painful, right? <laughs> right. So we're grateful that you're all here. So let's start with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, we come to you tonight. We have we have so many things to be grateful for, even in struggle. Father, you 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 tell us we're supposed to consider it pure joy, and that's hard. But we just thank you that you have gathered us here tonight. I pray that you would be with our conversation, be with Nick as he leads us, and we thank you for this connection. So, Father, be with us now as we just um, continue to be in relationship with one another. We just so appreciate it, and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Nick. Well, thank you all. I appreciate seeing your, your face after a, a week of being away. Um, I was at family camp last week, and that was a wonderful experience to be up in the mountains. And we have a camper that we stayed in. We even had the comfort of, of pretty much our own bed and uh, total control over how hot we were and how cold we were. And it was probably the best camp experience I've had. So it was pretty nice. Um, but it's always good to be in that community up there. But I did miss all of you. Uh, it's amazing. You know, I, I was with, uh, I did my normal live with Dan Massard today. And uh, I, I, both of us felt like, man, oh, man, it just seems like we've been away from each other for an eternity, which reminds me how important it is to fellowship with one another, to like be in each other's presence and find out what's going on and and uh, spend time catching up. And I do wish more and more people would understand that uh, this is time well spent. We formed a community here um, that others are certainly welcome into. But as I've always said, one of the benefits <laughs> is with such a small group, we get to know each other really well. We get to really dig in to, to hear what's going on in everybody's life, which is wonderful. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll say, Pat, I'm, I'm glad you had the surgery because I think uh, I think you needed that. But I also uh, can empathize a little bit with you that, you know, you're probably not in the best of spirits right now. So we'll continue to pray for you um, as you heal through this process. Um, and again, before, before I turned on my video, Howard, I got to hear the story and the update from Vicki. So that, that was good as well. Um, it's always good to hear, but I really think tonight's going to be just a matter of, of us spending a little time together that we think is appropriate, some fellowship time, and then moving on. I really don't have anything uh, to report. Uh, we're in a, in a uh, process right now of, of, again, you're aware, looking for a director of discipleship. That'll be something that's, you know, being worked on over the next month. Uh, we have an, a, a leadership retreat coming up with the, um, uh, the ad council and the commission chairs and, and a few select others um, that we're gonna be talking about where we are as a denomination, uh, why we are as a denomination and how we can do things better as a denomination, a, a collective of churches to um, advance the kingdom in a better fashion maybe than, than what we've done in the past. You know, we're always trying to get better at doing, you know, sharing the gospel doing what God called us to do, um, doing this, you know, obeying the specific command of Jesus Christ. And, you know, leadership has a responsibility to sit down and, and you know, assess and evaluate that. And that's where we're, we're doing. Uh, and, and again, that'll take place towards the end of July. So with that, I mean, I don't really have much more to, to report to you. Um, just to go around. And I guess, Colleen, I heard you say, if Pat has something to say, he'll, he'll share it in chat. Um, Again, how Daniel? I don't, Daniel, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to go to you and say how are things in Altoona, and then I'm going to come back and and uh, I'm not sure if you caught what Howard reported or not, but we can come back to that. So, how are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> good. good. Uh, we just finished Saturate Altoona on Sunday, mm -hmm. so it's kind of amazing for four weeks in a row. More than 500 people just coming on the same plaza. Uh, 35 pastors, I mean, music, you name it. And uh, the weather was good each time. And uh, how can I say? You know, usually you, you get somebody from the outside, you organize something and it's nice and great. They come and they go. And uh, whatever they bring, likely they just take back with them. 
and here there was nobody really came. I mean, we're all locals. So we put something in place and uh, it's probably still in place. And uh, me, me, meaning that, uh, that that spirit just continues. Uh, we have been praying like for over three years now, every Sunday morning, and we continue doing it. And uh, uh, how can I say that is, is there is a kind of ownership in, uh, in this event, which I have never seen before because I was never that part of something. And again, when it's from somebody else who just comes and goes like, okay, you know, it's one more to put on the list. This one is like, it's, it's here to stay. It was, it, 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 it came locally and it still stays in town. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> so what's going to happen, uh, we don't really know. Uh, another thing which I, uh, with which I was very impressed with, uh, so among the people in this group, you have people who know better, preach better, you know, more organized and so on, but there is no kind of hierarchy or the, the best preacher is not the, the boss. The, the best musician is not the boss and so on. It, it seems to me like it's a, it's a fellowship of people who take the whole thing at the same level that the apostle, the apostle did, you know, something needs to be done and uh, okay, let's do it. And uh, it, it, it's kind of funny. It's like, it, 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 it feels very uh, uh, acts like, you know, there were, the subject on Sunday was we were all talking about acts three, three and four. And, uh, and uh, everybody was preaching that in town too. It's like, there, there is something, I, I, I cannot describe it, but uh, definitely uh, it, it's a step. It's it, it's it's a step going up, and uh, uh, something is moving. Don't ask me. It's underground, but something is moving, and is moving terribly fast or terribly strong. You know, for example. Uh, so six years ago, I was a black sheep in the hospital. I was sent home nicely. You know, fired. I mean, really, as a volunteer, you can fire volunteers. You know, you. You just take everything they already give you and then you, you kick them out so that works uh, yeah. and uh, so months ago uh, I, I told you probably told you i was asked to come back in i don't know why what has changed but it's the same guy so uh it's my third week <laughs> so third week and uh, i do tuesday and wednesday so I, I i start early and then i go to work you know and uh the application is not even filled yet. Uh, today, you asked me, okay, I need you to go on the chemo on Thursday. And, uh, you know, tell me if you can do that. So we're back to a place I started seven years ago. Didn't really have a clue. It was, it was the first time in my life I would do anything like that, go and pray in the hospital, you know. And, uh, okay, tried, crashed and burned. And... Uh, after some good time, uh, now it's back, and then it's probably back a different way. And um, I wonder if this whole combination of what's going on in Altoona is also part of it, you know, because all these people, in including the, the, the that guy from the hospital, they, they show up on Sunday. They, we, 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 we come together, maybe if only 10 people speak or pray and so on, but we all know each other. We all shake hands. We all talk, and and uh, it's it, it's a powerful group. Who uh, I would say has little impact yet, but uh, they all bring their own churches. You know, those five hundred people just came from all those churches, mm. and uh, and and everybody was there, and everybody there, there is a movement. There is there is there is something going on. You see, at the same time, we, we're still wondering what we, what we want to do with the piece of land and the building we bought and all these things. But uh, there is a movement. <laughs> when God is on the move, <laughs> you have two choices, run away or move along. I mean, it, it's, it, you, you never have a clue what. But uh, so I think we have decided to move along. So uh, and uh, let, 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 let's see God at work. I mean, for real. So. It's uh, it's it's quite impressive. 
So a lot of investment for a while. You, you see, somebody told me one time that uh, we were talking about pieces of time in my life and uh, we were able to cut it down in pieces of seven years. And, uh, you know, seven years this way, seven years the other way. And that guy, it was a pastor, he told me, you know, uh, you got seven years of, of low and of tough stuff. Now coming seven years of, you know, the opposite. So he was just saying that, but so that's when I came to Altoona. But now Altoona so far has been seven years of training. So now is a new period of seven years starting. We'll see what's going on with that. So uh, it's like, I usually don't look, I, I look back, I look back, uh, especially for when I make mistakes or when things are not going the way I thought they should go. I look, I always look back and I blame, I blame myself for well, probably everything, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what I could do better or not do, or, or sometimes just forget about it. it was not just probably in my league or what, 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 what I was ready to do. But no, no it's, 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 I don't think it works that way. It's, even seven years somewhere is a stone, and that so stone represents something. And I guess it just keep piling up. So as long as I live, uh, I should every seven years be able to carve a stone or take a stone and put it somewhere and praise God for what he had did for the last seven years because it's a kind of a nice chunk of time. And uh, you can do a lot of things in seven years and you can also move on after seven years. So uh, uh, I don't know, Altuna looks like that right now. Now I'm sure everybody else has a different story, but uh, it was really upbeat. I mean, what, what these guys have been doing now for the last three years, starting from nothing, just a group of seven or 10 guys, I think in the beginning, uh, playing, decided to play together. And now it's like, uh, okay, we, it's half the churches of the city, and uh, it's a lot of people. It's only the churches did at this moment. Saturate Altuna was supposed to first saturate the church before you can send the church out there, you know, saturate the city. So there's, there's a, lo a lot of things in process, but uh, no, I think, I, I think we went through something. And uh, I, I wanna say it here. And I want to say this way because it's something to mark on the calendar where Altuna is going. And uh, yeah, I think so because it's for the people behind, you know, it's, it's a milestone. Uh, I, I see it that way. Even so, I have no clue what's on the, on the ground, but I, 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 I can feel that there is a milestone, there is something coming up. As long as we continue move, you know, it's like, if we decide to stop right now, yeah, it's gonna stay on the ground forever. But it's time to sense it and to do something with it. So uh, that's what I have to say about Altuna tonight. <laughs> I love it. I mean, anytime the kingdom comes together for kingdom business, you know, anytime you feel the presence of the Lord moving and you can get yeah. behind it and go, that's a wonderful yeah. thing. I know, I love it too. Yeah. I love it too. Excellent. Well, appreciate that report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so at this point, there's not a next step. Are you saying like that? that what they had planned has been completed, and now, now they have to get together. I'm, and I'm sure we Sunday morning we'll we we we'll just gather. We continue our, our thing, and somebody will come up with something. I'm there you go. Quite confident, you know. And uh, but uh, you see, it, 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 there's a way where. Whoever decides to do something, uh, any leader will come up with an idea and so on. But it's how it's perceived and how people yeah. take that idea and what they do with it. It's, it's, it's you know, you, you can come up just like you try to move the ERC. It's like you can talk as much as you want. If the ERC <laughs> has not decided to move, you know, you kind of, man, <laughs> nothing is moving. But when you start seeing that the bottom level, I mean, the ground level and so on, you start to pick up what, uh, you know, what you bring even if it's completely different than what you had in mind, when it's like, wow, now, now it's God pushing these people to do something with whatever you come up with. And most likely it's not gonna be exactly what you have had in mind, which is nice because then at least you can say, that wasn't me. I mean, I, I did what I have to do. I spoke, 
you know, I, I gave them ideas. I, I moved them as much as I could. But at some point, they woke up, they decided to get up, grab whatever was on the ground and move with it. So uh, that, I think that's, that's the way I see Christian life. It's like, okay, whatever God wants to do. So, Amen. Now we're all in. <laughs> there we go. So, Howard, uh, I'll turn to you, and and again, you might have to repeat yourself, but and if you if you choose to, and if you don't, that's fine too. I mean, we we heard that. Um, praise God, she's doing better. Okay. Let me let me do three things, if you will, please. First of all, sure. I want to say to Pat, I teased him about not being able to talk, him, but it is a prayer, and I understand that. Got a story to back when I inherited my dad's Oldsmobile. The turn single handle broke off. It destroyed the turn it took care of the turn singles changing in the lights and the horn so i went to the dealer to, to uh, get it fixed he said oh we can't do it today it's going to be three or four days before we can do it and i said to him do you know how hard it is for a pastor not be able to blow his own horn he said i'll fix it in an hour and he did <laughs> no. <laughs> So anyway, I just thought of Pat like that. Yeah, and I, and I was, Nick, you just said, Dan, I didn't know he was vindictive. Here today in the Bible study, I type my hard-earned wisdom to give to you people, and he just skipped right over. He never looked at it like that. So uh, I tell him I'll never tease him again. I apologize. I'll never tease him again. Uh, I, and I'm not upset. I'm not upset. That's I'm just teasing that scenario like that. But I'll have to go back and look and see what, what comment did, because that, that conversation got – I don't know. I mean, it, it, it went to, yeah, it was, a, yeah, it was positive. Yeah. I'm not, that was great. I'm, I'm just teasing. Don't give a wrong about that. Vicky's had three surgeries. She was in hospital eight days. Two of the surgeries do wonderful. The third one has not been working. Uh, if it continues not working, then in three or four weeks, she'll have to have more intense surgery. Mm. And it has to do with the controlling the, uh, bladder and, uh, the, uh, anyway, that's an area like that. Her spirits are good. Uh, I can say that I praise the Lord because her vital signs couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, they, they couldn't believe with the MS and her age like that, how they could be so perfect. But uh, good Lord answers prayer. Um, yeah, just there's so many good positive things that happen like that through the scenario. So we have a lot to be thankful for. I mentioned she there's not a person that came in the room that she didn't ask if they knew Jesus. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she wasn't here, and it's it's amazing, and I, I I hope in every hospital in Frederick, there's a great majority who are not ashamed to be called Christians, and several prayed with her like that, and uh, they talk yeah you know, biblical stuff like that. It was it was just a what of those they She always said to everyone, "And the Lord go with you." And uh, two of the doctors were Muslim, and one just looked at her and said, "Huh." And that one says, and the Lord go with you too, like that. So that's kind of thing. So, yeah, is she out of the woods? Actually, yes. Is that we both agree and understand this, and the church understands this. Yeah. Whatever time God takes us home, that's okay. Right. That's okay. Yeah, we're prepared for it like that. Do we want another day? Yeah. But, uh, you know, we weren't scared about death or dying like that. Just in one of the struggle and start and, and yeah, and she didn't, you know. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, she's in a little discomfort. But the good thing about MS is it's made her body uh, fairly pain-free because they, she can't feel it. Mm. If you, if she says she's in pain, you and I could be screaming because of that. Cat, that she just does just numb in many areas like that. So that's good. So a lot of positive things. It's yeah, I'm weary. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, because her surgery wasn't Prentice's major surgery, she was using the last one. Yeah, one time she's supposed to be at six o'clock, it was eight o'clock. The other time she's supposed to be at eight o'clock, it was 9 30. I'm not used to going to bed at, at uh, 1 30 in the morning. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's just, I'm taking this toll like that. I'm tired and uh, I'm just kind of in a funk. I'm not discouraged or like that. I'm just, I don't feel like I want to do anything. You know, you have to right. force yourself to do anything. That's where I'm at now. So that's that's a negative thing. But the, at church, we had a great attendance Sunday. Uh, I have a, a school teacher who's retired after 35 years, and she has that finger, right? 
And she looked at me Sunday morning and said, you're tired. You need to take care of yourself. Right. And uh, after church is her piano like that and says, great sermon. I really enjoyed all that. But you go home and take care of yourself. <laughs> you love people who love you like that. Okay. Right. Yeah. You just uh, like, I, like I say, I, I have nothing but praise for it. I went again, good attendance, bigger than number did. And uh, just positive things like that. So, yeah, I have nothing to rejoice about, even though dead. Even though Dan, you know, ignored me, I have nothing to be. <laughs> Please don't take that seriously, okay? Please don't take that like that. I'm going to pass it on to him and tell him, you know. <laughs> well, well, do it with authority, all right? So, <laughs> so no, that was good. No, yeah. and we appreciate you always being there too. So, no, it was a good discussion. Like I didn't jump in because it was a very positive, healthy, and uh, you know, challenging discussion. I guess I want to say because. Uh, some of the questions we still can't answer like that. It's not good. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Praying for the disciple position like that, I was told I was too old to apply for it, so I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, a lie. <laughs> I was I was told that, but that, that's 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 neither here nor there because, uh, yeah. yeah no, it's, Lord, uh, open the doors for the person who's going to be in it. Yeah, I'm praying for who that person is like that. So. And I, I appreciate those prayers because, again, we're in a position where I said, like, if we don't walk away from this field with a feeling that somebody was was truly called, you know, really had the heart and was truly called, um, living out discipleship, then we'll just, we'll, you know, we'll pass and we'll move on to the next group. I mean, uh, until God raises up the person that, that you know, through the discernment of, of the group, um, we believe can do the work. And again, the, the most critical thing, it's silly to say, but it's, it's got to be said. This person needs to understand what Christ taught. This person needs to really have mastered the gospel and understand what Christ taught and is striving to live by that, you know, by those teachings, those lessons. Because um, there's no possible way that you can preach with integrity and not live that life in this position. You have to be able to, you know, you're making disciples as he called them to be made. And, and there's got to be a whole lot of life integrity behind that yeah. uh, in order for it to be blessed. So, yeah, I appreciate the prayers. I mean, this is going to be, this is going to be an important position. And I have a concern and not about the decision is that our denomination is notorious of getting somebody in a position like this and they expect everybody to fall in line and do the same thing. We have to identify where our churches are. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't identify the church, then it's not going to work. Uh, we had evangelism clinics. We had all kinds of things. Uh, uh, and it's not that there were wrong programs. Jim Moss's program, People's Spots, not wrong. But it didn't fit every church. Right. I heard his feelings because it didn't fit Park. And Lima was wonderful. But it didn't fit where Parkway has because of different culture and that kind of thing. And. And that's my concern is that not only we find the person, but we find the person who understands every church is different and works with that scenario. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not criticizing. I think it's a wonderful step, but that's a real concern I have because our, our history is not good. Our history, we get a dynamic person there, and it's not that that person is wrong, but uh, there's no magic formula. One formula is going to fit every church, and they have to realize that. Yeah, Howard, the one thing I would say is that um, those that would come at the job with a with an attitude that there's a program out there that's going to fix this probably aren't going to make it through the process. Um, this is much more about a person who, um, as again, understands the heart of Christ, understands the teachings of Christ. And can look past every tradition, can look past every, you know, uh, challenge of the moment and, and always focus attention on the heart of Christ. Because the only way you're going to get that dynamic um, uh, discipleship that you're talking about, one that fits in your church, one that fits in the Altoona church, one that fits in. The only way is to get the core elements of what Christ taught right and then allow the church to, to put that into the context that they're living in. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, you know, this cookie cutter thought, this 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 um, the idea that it's a program or it is in some way maybe an attractional model or any, you know, that, that's not what this is. This is this is the words of Christ put into action. How can we help you um, to better understand what that looks like? 
because in some ways it's going to be radically different than what most churches are operating by now. And so how can we come alongside, provide support where support is needed, um, provide cover where cover is needed? Um, you know, in some cases there may be pushback and saying, well, you know, I've been attending church for 30 years. Why do I have to do anything differently? Well, let's talk about that. You know, um, let's find out what, what is, what transformation has been the result of those 30 years? Has there been transformation? If there has been, that's wonderful. How have you invested that? How have you used it? This person is really going to be a, a teacher, a motivator, um, certainly a shepherd, uh, a teammate to, to, you know, Colleen, as she takes on the challenge of looking out for the pastors and their families, a, you know, a, a teammate to Dave, as he goes out and continues to look at church health, um, you know, through, and the commissions behind them as well. But this person really has to be the champion of true, honest to goodness, gospel driven discipleship. Um, and, and like you've said, you know, what that ultimately looks like, what I can tell you, it's not going to look like is it's not going to be a program. It's not going to be uh, some human created whatever. It's going to be, what does the scripture say? What does the gospel say? What did Christ teach? How can we teach our churches to do that better? You know, in their context. Yeah. And so, I wasn't being negative. Don't think I was oh, being no. negative about it. I, I feel very positive about it. I just have, it's just being an old man and, and been in there for 55 years, you kind of realize with, our past is not good that way. We just struggle mm -hmm. and get into another same old, same old. We do that, we're de defeating the purpose. That's my concern. No, and I hear you. And, and trust me when I tell you, I am as sensitive to the topics that you raised as you are. Uh, you know, because again, I know I know for a fact what won't work. And what won't work is a lot of things we've done in the past. Right? And what will work is the one thing we should have been doing all along. <laughs> right? And, and for some reason... You know, the American minded church refuses to do it the way Christ told us to do it. And, and so we've got to get back to that point where we're really preaching Jesus, where, you know, where we can honestly say with integrity, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. As Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Um, and our lives should look like that of Jesus. What, what did Jesus do? That's how I want to do it. What did Jesus say? That's how I want to say it. You know, that sort of thing. Can so I, I do appreciate that? it. Um, the Bible said what came to my mind was like, how many churches, whatever denomination, would Jesus be welcomed? Mm. Because of the traditions, uh, the things we feel like they think we're so concerned of what we have done. We don't understand what Jesus could do. And I, I, that's one thing as far as prayer, you will get everybody in Parkway, you know, the 5,000 we don't have, but they believe prayer works. And yeah, my wife's an example, but that's not the only one. Right. You have a man that they were going to pull the they pull the tube out, expected, and not to live more than three minutes. He's lived two years now, mm -hmm. and as we know, it's by the power of prayer and that kind of thing. And yeah, that's the kind of thing you, you you celebrate what God. Not only there's two things we teach there. One is if you have a prayer request, the pastor, I'm not praying for you. I'm praying with you. Right. I'm not praying for yourself. Then don't waste my time. And I. I'm very strict on that I'm publicly. And it sounds mean, but that's what you need. Secondly, like that, you know, it's not what God has already done. What's he going to do? Expectations. And, you know, if you pray that, what do you expect God to do? And, and don't make him say it out loud, but you have a prayer request. What do you expect God to do? And it's amazing. Your expectation may not be meant like you want them, but expectation of God doing something is to me. And that's what's exciting. You, you see God working like that. Yeah, minor thing. I'm talking too much. Forgive me, but I usually yeah. pick out songs, and I forgot to uh, forgot about them. I was all week with Vicky. Yeah, it was. It's been a rough week, all right, mostly, all right. And so I two o'clock. I remember. So I sat down and prayed about the songs. I opened them, and right away three songs just popped up. Okay, and then the last two. It normally takes me a half hour, forty five minutes to really get to them. It took me like fifteen minutes. I copied them, given them to. And after service, uh, several people said, and then I gave credit to the Lord, that was the most beautiful songs we've sang in years. <laughs> and and, and I, you know, not because I picked them out, because the good Lord knew what we needed. There you go. And you give God the credit for that, and you just get excited because it's just hymns. Anybody can pick out hymns. But not everybody can pick out the right hymns. Not mm. me. good Lord picked out the right hymns and went perfect with the scripture like that. And it, people are thrilled by it. Right. And, and, and but it's not thrilled because of the pastor is thrilled because 
it's just a little thing or a major thing or whatever you say. You just know that you know, look what God's doing. There's a purpose for our church because, and I'm convinced the reason many churches have failed and closed because they haven't found the purpose of God for the church. I'll be quiet now. No, there's that, that'll preach an entire hour there. I mean, that good, good, uh, good message. You're right. Yeah. Well, Howard, for you, it is important that you take care of you and mm -hmm. exhausting when you're running back and forth to the hospital, you know, it's emotionally exhausting, physically exhausting. So give yourself the space, give yourself the time to recover. Um, you know, honestly, it's really important for, for you to be a caregiver. You have to take care of you as well. So be, be careful about that. And uh, Pat put in the chat, he completely agrees with you about how every culture, every community is different. And, um, you know, and every, all the needs are different in each community. And then he also wants us to pray for Ashley has her surgery next week. It's a big surgery. It's, I think, on the 6th. And uh, so that'll be happening. We'll be get, getting together that evening, Tuesday evening, but her surgery is on the 6th and it's a really big one. I know that. Um, and he's also been talking to Dave about why sample to possibly expand the kingdom in his neck of the woods up that way. I think we still own that building, um, but also that, you know, God, you know, moves and whenever we pray. And so, you know, all these things need to be bathed in prayer. So. That was from Pat. Great. Colleen, do you have anything else? No, I just I just really ask that you pray for the committee that's going to be hiring um, this discipleship um, person, that we would just completely be bathing all of that in prayer. I mm. think that's the key, you know, I mean, because the person that God wants for this position um, we has to have prayer covering as well as discernment. Like people need to discern um, that this person is actually the person and God can do that. Mm. Pray. So, you know, I would really ask that there be a lot of prayer for that. So whoever watches this later or is, you know, with us now live, that you would be in prayer for the people that are going to choose and be told by God who this person is important we want to we want to obey his will absolutely so all right um it's a little bit early but again you know we've we've covered uh, those that are on here um we've heard some wonderful news about the kingdom growth about you know the people that we love and how they're being cared for um, and we've had this reminder where, you know, and I would say this beyond just the group assembled here, it is important that you take care of yourself. It is very important that you get the rest that you need, that you get the time away that you need. Um, can't, you know, same old, same old. You can't help other people if you're, if you're putting yourself, your own life on the line. So be the best you can be for, for God in the kingdom. Uh, so but I appreciate your joining us this evening and I hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful 4th of July, uh, celebrate with family and friends. And, uh, I'm going to pray over us all now before we part ways, Lord God, we come before you again as a family, um, a family of people who really enjoy getting together. And so we appreciate the fellowship that we have, uh, through this amazing technology. Uh, Lord God, we appreciate the fellowship that we have in our churches. Lord, we, we appreciate the fact that, you know, we, we are starting to assemble once again. We're starting to get together once again in face-to-face -to -face settings. Uh, Lord, we can have a program that saturates Altoona because, you know, we're on the other end of this virus. Um, and we can come together and celebrate as community. That's, that's a special time, Lord God. It's an opportunity for all of us to reestablish your kingdom in, in the people that we touch and the places that we go. You know, make us all bold, Lord God. I pray that your Holy Spirit energizes us, empowers us, and, and gives us the, the, the fortitude, whatever it is, to actually be able to talk about our faith um, and not be so concerned, but do it in the sense of love. Um, you know, have that courage because we love the people around us so much uh, that we want to share that faith. 
Uh, Lord, I pray over Howard and Vicky that, that, you know, Howard would get rest, that, that his, his, uh, um, um, stress will be relieved, Lord God. I pray for his congregation that they continue to rise up around him. I, you know, I give them praise and give you praise because of them, that they would love him so much that they would tell him to take care of himself. Lord God, we pray for Vicki and what she's going through. Uh, the, the good thing is that she has done for the kingdom in terms of evangelism and caring for people and praying for people and just speaking your name to people. Uh, Lord God, we, we just celebrate that. We celebrate so many of the pastors throughout the ERC, throughout the general conference, throughout the country, throughout the world, Lord God, those that would put their life on the line, their comfort on the line, um, Lord God, their, you know, everything they own on the line to celebrate the love that you have for the community around them, Lord. Um, and this evening, we just give you thanks and praise. We ask for your continued presence, that we would be aware of your presence. We know you're present everywhere, but that we would be aware of your presence in such a strong and powerful way that we can remain in your will, because that is our heart's desire, Lord God. We thank you for the relationship that we are, are given the opportunity to have with you. We appreciate every responsibility that you give us to be your hands and feet and salt and light on this world. Um, and Lord God, we just ask that you bless each person on this call and those that are in your service, that this weekend of celebration here in America will be one that is blessed, one that is um, filled with family and joy. Uh, Lord God, opportunity to share your holy word with other people. Um, let's make it a celebration, Lord, because we need a celebration and we appreciate the gift that you give to us. And Lord, we just thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who has all authority and power in heaven and earth. And it's in his name that I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Have a great thank weekend. You. We'll see you next you week. Too. Thank all you right. so much. Good